But first, Israel is regrouping and gathering its strength to invade the last Hamas stronghold in the Gazan city of Rafa. Now, Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says the date is set for his long-promised offensive. And welcome to a brand new hour of America's Newsroom. I'm Dana Perino. Morning to you. Interesting, interesting morning so far, huh? I'm Bill Hemmer. Good morning. The Israeli leader forging ahead despite President Biden's pressure to hold off against invading Rafa to take out the Iranian-backed terror group. Critics say that Biden's criticism of the offensive is tying the hands of our closest ally in the Middle East, which only encourages Hamas to dig in its heels and rejecting a ceasefire deal. But the Biden State Department's not buying it. We have made clear to Israel that we think a full-scale military invasion of Rafa would have an enormously harmful effect on those civilians and that it would ultimately hurt Israel's security. Let's get to Trey Yanks. He's live in Tel Aviv. As a lot of this news is swirling right now, as Netanyahu says there's a date. Yeah, Dana, good morning. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says his troops will enter Gaza's southernmost city of Rafa. You can hear off in the distance there a military helicopter back and forth along the Mediterranean Sea. Right now, there are currently 1.4 million Palestinians sheltering in this southern area of the Gaza Strip. It's not clear when they will be evacuated and how long that process might take. But this is a consequential decision if it does take place for a variety of reasons. Netanyahu says the move to destroy remaining Hamas battalions is needed to win the war. This victory requires entering Rafah and eliminating the terrorist battalions there. This will happen. There is a date. It's day 186 of the war between Israel and Hamas. The amount of aid going into Gaza is slowly increasing, with more than 400 trucks entering the enclave on Monday. After IDF soldiers withdrew from southern Gaza over the weekend, some Palestinian civilians returned to the wreckage of their homes in the city of Khan Yunis. Recent reports estimate more than 50 percent of buildings in Gaza were damaged or destroyed since October 7th. While the focus for Israel remains on the southern front, Israeli forces are on high alert alert in the north amid continued attacks from the Iran-backed Lebanese militant group Hezbollah. Dana. Trey Yangs, thanks for staying on top of that for us. Thank you, Bill. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmey. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.